Hey Shot Kick community, my name is Rob Woodcox. I'm a fine art and conceptual portrait photographer. And we're here today in Washington, United States of America. It's a beautiful, foggy, rainy day. Perfect atmosphere for this conceptual shoot that I'm about to do with some models. These are my six tips for shooting fine art portrait photography. My first tip when doing fine art portrait photography is to learn how to be respectful when working with models. It's really easy to overwork or um, disrespect models uh, when working with them. It's really easy to get uh, really caught up in what you want out of you know, a shoot or maybe the delivery of photos. So make sure that when you're working with models, you ask them what they want from the shoot. Don't just think about yourself. Think about the people that you're working with and make them feel like they're getting something out of the process too. So I always like to make sure that the models are getting something that they want for their portfolio. Uh, I make sure that they're interested in what I'm shooting and I make sure that I fully communicate what they should expect out of the day so that they don't show up and end up upset and you know giving me a bad name, giving the day a bad result. So, so my second tip uh, I would say has to do with finding inspiration. So how do you even get to the shoot day? Uh, so for me, I like to find inspiration by giving myself space to really think and breathe. And so I have this concept of building space into every day, every week, every month, and every year where I take time to just retreat to myself. It gives me time to reflect on what I've been through recently, maybe reflect on my childhood, reflect on just the things that make me who I am and make me a part of this world so that what I'm creating is more meaningful. So I would encourage you if you're looking to find inspiration, uh, take some time to take a hike in the woods or read a book or sit in a park for an hour and just ponder things. And when I do that, I find a lot of inspiration that I journal about and that leads directly to the concepts and ideas that I capture in my photographs. <laughs> it sounds really simple, but we don't always give ourselves the space and time to really breathe and think. So don't forget to do that and build that into your day, an hour a day, a day a week, a weekend a month, and if you have the opportunity, a month every year. Just retreat, take time for yourself. So my third tip, once you've found that inspiration, my advice to you is to not wait until you have all the resources or wait until you have a big budget. Just go out and create. Just do it. Like Shia LaBeouf says, just do it. You know? Like you got to get out there and just get yourself thinking, creating, practicing your skills. The only way to get better as a photographer is to actually do the things that you want to do. Through that experience, you grow, you learn, uh, and you really start to nail those techniques that give you your unique style, um, your unique vision, and that's what starts to inspire people. Three more tips. Three more tips. Three more tips. Okay. A lot of people ask me how I produce a shoot because it's a really time-consuming process to think of an idea, produce a shoot, have the people to produce a shoot, and then you know, finalize all of those details. So my fourth tip to you guys today would be to not be afraid to ask for help. I know it sounds simple, but whenever I'm about to do a shoot, I post on Facebook, I ask some friends, I ask people if they wanna be a part of it. Sometimes if I'm doing it for a production, I have the budget to pay, but sometimes if I'm doing it for fun, People love being a part of something where they get to just create and collaborate. And so I just ask. And the worst thing someone can say is no. And 95% of the time, people want to be a part of what you're doing. So if you want to create stronger work, more compelling work, more advanced work, don't be afraid to ask people to help. You don't have to do this by yourself. You don't have to be a lone artist in the corner, you know hiding in fear of the world outside. Uh, just get out there and ask people to be a part of your process and it's, be it's going to become so much more enriching and fulfilling. All right, so we're on tip number five. 
A lot of people ask me if I use natural light or artificial light in my photos. And I know there is a lot of talk about, you know, one being better than the other, one being more natural. But my belief is that both can look very natural and it's good to have both in your repertoire to be able to use when you need it. So sometimes the fact of the matter is it's just too dark to work without artificial light. So I like to be proficient in both. And some of my photos, the natural light that I discover is perfect. So that's what I use. And in other situations, I want to have a little fill light on my model's face, or I want to have a little bit of back rim light, or I want to make the scene a little more dramatic. So I use a Profoto B2 kit, and it's a really awesome travel kit. It's very portable. I actually traveled for five months around the world with all of my camera gear, including camera body, lenses, and my Profoto kit and my laptop all in one bag. Now you might say, Rob, you're crazy. What if that all got stolen at once? You know, hey. But uh, it's a really awesome system and it's good to have both on your repertoire, like I said. I've become really well known for my sort of surreal style. And so of course I always get the question, you know, how much is Photoshop? How much is in camera? And so I'd love to talk a little bit about my uh, philosophy with shooting in camera versus Photoshop. So overall my philosophy is that your art is your art and whatever steps you have to take to get to a final product it doesn't matter. If your final product moves people, if it inspires people, if it has personal meaning then it's art and it's valuable. So that being said <laughs> I prefer not to spend hours and hours and hours in front of a computer screen so I do my best when I'm shooting to get as much in camera as possible. So if I can paint somebody's skin versus retouching it later, if I can do makeup versus having to fix it later, if I can style hair, if I can move a dress so that it looks like it's flying, if I can throw something up in the air, you know, I'm going to do all of that stuff for surreal effect in camera as much as possible. However, I haven't found the secret powder that Peter Pan uses to make people fly yet, so when I do levitation photos and things like that, I often have to incorporate Photoshop, uh, but I'm still shooting everything on location. So if I have a person floating in the air in front of Washington Square and there's hats raining down around him, uh, I'm going to shoot that scene on location, I'm going to have the model jump in a realistic, believable manner and capture them on site. I'm going to throw hats in the air. I'm going to do all of that stuff so that the light matches, so that the color balance matches, so that the mood matches. You know, if I try to shoot a scene in broad daylight and then shoot someone in a studio, the mood's just not going to be the same. It's going to be really hard to piece those together in Photoshop. So when I need Photoshop, I still rely on my location, my, my light, all of that stuff to make a cohesive final image. And so the the sort of style that I've developed, which I like to call realistic surrealism, is accomplished by shooting everything on location, getting as much as possible in camera, and then accompanying my creative process with Photoshop. And so through that process, I'm able to really wow my audience. I'm able to create something very different and unique. Uh, however, it's very believable, and, and I love that because I'm a very um, open, and uh, honest person and I want that to shine through in my work. Well hey guys, I really appreciate you tuning in today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed witnessing our grand adventure here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I appreciate ShotKit giving me this opportunity to share a little bit about what I do with their audience and I hope that you've learned something valuable that you can apply to your process and your inspiration and your daily lives.